Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is November the 9th, 2011, and this is going to be tutorial number 8, which is going to be part 2 of our effects stream class that I started back in tutorial number 5 all those months ago. I've been putting this off, but I needed to get it done, and today is the day I'm going to do it. So, for those of you who are just joining me, Tutorial number 5 was made a few months ago and it was just outlining the basics of using the N-Audio class library to make some sort of effect stream. And that effect stream would allow us to apply some sort of effect like, for example, a reverb or an echo effect in some sort of generic manner and then have N-Audio do the uh, format conversion as well as the playback of the file. And N-Audio, for those of you who are also just joining us, is a class library for handling audio file loading, playback, uh, ASIO drivers, MIDI, all that sort of stuff. So I've been doing a few tutorials on that. Those tutorials are posted on YouTube and all the source code and tutorials are always available at www.giawa.com slash tutorials. They're all here. And you can grab the source code for tutorial number five, which this lesson will be based on, right here on the website. There it is. All right, so we're going to jump right into the code. Here's tutorial number five all loaded up. If we run it, we'll get a dialog box where we can open a WAV file. And I have an example WAV file here that I recorded earlier, which is just me saying a few things into my microphone. So if I go and play this. Hello. There I am. Okay, very exciting. Now, let's just quickly take a look through the code that we wrote last time and sort of come up to speed with how this all works. So the first thing we did was we opened up a wave file using a wave file reader and passed that to a wave channel 32 object. Now the wave channel 32 will do all the format conversion that's necessary to output 32 bit floating point numbers. Now we then pass that wave channel 32 to our custom effects stream, then pass that to block line reduction stream to get it all ready for playback and then finally we pass it to this direct sound out and that will play back over our default audio object. In the effect stream it's pretty simple. We just do everything we need to implement a wave stream and then in the read method we just read directly from the source stream and provide a little bit of feedback letting the user know that the effect stream is in fact being called and data is passing through this method. So using wave channel 32 we know that the incoming data is floating point 32 bit. So this will make it pretty easy for us to get floating point information out of this. And floating point is usually the easiest thing to deal with to begin with because we don't have to deal with bit shifts, things like that, 16-bit, 32-bit, 24-bit numbers. They're guaranteed to be 32-bit floating point because that's what the Wave Channel 32 uh, object does and it takes care of it all for us. So let's start out here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read from the source stream into my buffer just as before and I'll return the number of bytes we read at the end of this method. The next thing to do is to loop over every sample that we read and convert that to floating point number, do something to it, and then convert it back into our byte array. So I'm going to loop from 0 to read divided by 4. And the reason I've done read divided by 4 is because read contains how many bytes were read from the stream, and there's 4 bytes per sample. So read divided by 4 will be the number of samples that we're reading. I'll go and create float sample, and then I'm going to use the bit converter class, which is built into C sharp. And I'll go and convert to single our buffer, starting it at the index i times 4. And we chose i times 4 because i is our sample, and once again, 4 bytes per floating point number. Now I'm just going to do something with my sample. So in this case, I'm going to multiply sample by 0.5, remembering that f on the end there because we have to do floating point arithmetic. And the last bit is to convert our floating point number back into bytes and store those bytes in our buffer. Now there's a couple ways to do this. The first way I'm going to do this is create something called bytes. And I'm going to use the bit converter again to get the bytes of my sample. And then all I need to do is call bytes.copy2, my buffer, and again at the index i times 4. This will work fine. And in fact, let's run it really quick. When I go and open my WAV file, 
I should be at about half volume. Hello. And that seems to be the case. It's quite a bit quieter than it was before. So we'll close up that program. The downside to using this copy to method is that it, it's very slow. So what I'm going to do is something a little bit more advanced. I'm actually going to move the bytes directly. So the way to do that is to go into buffer and write write my bytes directly back to my buffer. And we need to do this four times because there's four bytes. There we go. So we write byte 0 through to 3 to the offset i times 4, 0 through to 3. I just put this 0 in there. The compiler will optimize it out. I put it there just to make it all line up nicely. And that will accomplish the same thing and it will be much faster. So there we go, we've gone and converted our floating point buffer array, which is stored as bytes to begin with, into actual floating point samples. We then do something with that floating point information and then convert it back into that byte array to be used by an audio for playback. So conceivably we could do anything with this data now, and that's what we'll do in the next tutorial. But since I've got a lot of time left, I'll go and create my basic eye effect interface so let's do that here. I'm going to create an interface called eye effect and every effect that I make, for example, a, an echo or anything like that, will implement this interface. And this just provides a common method that the effect stream can call to activate an effect. And all that I need to do here is have some sort of method that returns a floating point number, which will be one sample. And I'll call this method apply effect, and it takes a sample as its input. So now this effect stream has to have some sort of list of effects. So I'm going to use system.collections.generics list object to store a list of effects. And in the constructor of the effect stream, I'm going to create an instance of this list of effects. And the reason I've done a list of effects instead of just a single effect is because you'll probably want to apply a different effect to each channel of audio. So for example, if you have a two-channel audio source with left and right information, you probably want to apply a different effect to the left data than the right data. So then what we'll do in here is we need to keep track of which channel we're currently applying the data to because there is no guarantee that the buffer is going to be divisible by the number of channels that you're using. It, it will usually, but there is no guarantee. So I'm going to have something called channel, and it should be an int. And then what I'll do is every time we read a sample, I'm going to increment channel by one, and I'll make it modulo the number of channels that we have. So if we have two channel audio source, this channel number will be going 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. For five channel audio, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. And that will always let us know which channel we're on. And we'll go and make sure that the number of effects we have equals the number of channels that we have. And if that's the case, we'll apply the effect at the given channel to the sample. So we'll call our effects we'll use whatever channel we're currently on, we'll apply that effect to our sample, and that's all there is to it. So if we have an effect associated with this effect stream, and we have enough effects that there's a one-to-one -one mapping with the number of channels in our audio data, we will apply that effect, and then increment our channel, modulo our waveformat channels, and then we'll go and convert that floating point number back into a byte array and write it back out to our buffer. And that's it, this code should run fine, although this didn't. I see, because I didn't put public at the front there, my apologies. Go and run this code, and it's not going to do anything too fancy now, but we've laid the groundwork to write some really cool effects. Playback works just oh. as before. Excellent, so that's all there is to this tutorial. Tutorial number nine will cover a basic echo effect using this framework. And of course, all of this will be available on the website at giawa.com tutorials.
Thank you for watching, and as always, have fun coding.